cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad! Mabuhay! Good day to all! I am your tutor, Madge. Welcome to Itulan, a free online tutorial, an initiative of the Department of Education, Information and Communications Technology Service, Educational Technology Unit, ICTS EdTech. This program is aimed at helping and assisting learners from kindergarten, senior high school, all alive and sped learners. Aside from answering the modules, the Itulai is offering programs which we will surely look forward to. Together with our parents and teachers, the Itulai will bridge the gaps where difficulty and ease meet in learning new knowledge and skills. So, let us prepare our modules, pen and paper. Ready your mind to see and hear worthwhile and interesting lessons. Let us now study and learn together with our volunteer online tutors. Tara na! Hello everyone. Hello, hello po sa ating lahat. It's Tuesday and it's definitely English Day. Okay, so I am without my partner for today. Sir Kit is uh, attending an orientation for the Deaf Ed TV and so uh, tayo tayo lang po ang magkakasama ngayong araw. And of course, we'll still be a uh, Bridging the education amidst this pandemic. Okay, so welcome po sa ating online tutorial, DepEd HLI in Creative Writing. We are now in our quarter one, week two, various elements, techniques, and literary devices in specific forms of poetry. Okay, so... Uh, as I've said, I am your tutor, Jerry, from SDO Isabella, and join me, of course, every Tuesday afternoon at 4.40 to 5.20 in the afternoon via DepEd EdSec Unit and DepEd Ayo doon po sa ating mga uh, Facebook uh, pages. Okay, now, before I start, of course, I would like to have a shout-out po sa ating uh, SDO Isabella, uh, headed by Dr. Madeline L. Makaling. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. And of course, sa lahat po ng mga estudyante, especially senior high school learners who are uh, with me, joining me this afternoon. Hello po sa ating lahat. Okay, and syempre, uh, you are tasked, you are expected today to master... Uh, one specific competency, and that is to identify the various elements, techniques, and literary devices in specific forms of poetry. Okay? So, let's move on. And I want you to have the first activity now, and it's called Topic Finders. Okay. So, we are here to, uh, you are tasked here to find our topic so that we'll be able to uh, go on, move on later on with uh, the, the, the different genres that the topic will be uh, 
uh, yung, yung man nasa baba ng ating topics, okay? So, the given direction is, from the rumbled letters in the box, you are going to form a word by following the given clues. Again, from the rumbled letters in the box, you are going to form a word by following the given clues. Okay, so these are the jumbled letters. Okay, all you have to do is to look for those six letters and then join them together. And of course, we'll come up with the topic that we'll be undertaking today. So the clues are the following. Okay, the first letter is located in the middle of M and L. So that's your first clue. And then, the next letter is located either on the left side of R or on the right side of J. So you have now the, those two clues. Okay? For number three, count, the, uh, count until the 26th yet for the third letter. Okay? So you have now three clues. For number four, the last three letters are located between the letters W and E. Okay, so I'm giving you maybe 30 seconds to answer. Okay, habang nagsasagot kayo, uh, let me hear, let me greet some of our viewers for today. Miss Aliya Wee, uh, Miss Francie Rose de los Santos, Miss Rome, uh, Mr. Romnick Piano, and then we also have uh, Mr. Gonzalez and Kelvin Galano. So, dear learners, what is the topic that we are about to discuss based from our clues? Would you mind to guess? Anyone from the group? Okay, so according to Francis Rose de los Santos, it's poetry, okay? So it's poetry. So definitely our topic for today is poetry. Now what things that you need to know about, what are the things that you need to know about poetry? Okay? Before moving on, of course, to uh, our uh, formal discussion, I would like to ask you a certain question, and, and it goes this way, okay? So, what word or phrase comes to mind when you hear the word poetry? Anyone? What words or phrase come to your mind when you hear the word poetry? Okay. Yeah, you have here uh, Faith Mary Noriega from San Mariano National High School, Maine. Okay, would you mind to give some of your uh, perceptions, perspective when you hear the word or phrase poetry? Yes, according to uh, Joshua Pedro from uh, STEM 12 Euler, his answer is Rhyme. Wow. What else? Aside from rhyme, what other words or phrase could you come up when you hear the word poetry? Okay. Now, aside from that, you also have from John Lloyd Malilin, it's sound. Okay. So, there you go. So you have sound and rhyme, and let's see if your answers are correct. Okay. Now, poetry is an art form where language is used to express a message or emotion using meaning, rhythm, and sound. So you have now the rhythm, sound, and meaning. Okay. Now, moving on. We have what we call as the elements of poetry. 
Now, uh, we have a lot of elements, but then magpo-focus muna tayo for the first two elements because we'll be lacking of time, syempre. We only have 40 minutes and we have to master, of course, the, 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 the different elements. Okay? Hindi natin pwedeng pasadahan lang ng pasadahan. We need to master. Okay, so here we go. So the first element is the sound. And sound in poetry refers to devices that adds musicality, melody, and rhythm to the reading of a poem. Okay, again, sound in poetry refers to devices that add musicality, melody, and rhythm to the reading of a poem. So that's our first element. Okay. Now I have here examples of poem, and then let us try to see and arrive later on in a certain device under sound. Okay? So kailangan mabilis tayong magsagot because I am reading your answers in my inbox, in the inbox, in the comment section. Okay? So we have here the first poem. This is Sonnet 1 by Jose Garcia Villa. Okay, join me in reading. So first, a poem must be magical, then musical a seagull. It must be a brightness moving and hold secret a bird's flowery. Okay, so based on this poem, we have the highlighted words. First is magical. And then we have seagull. It was followed by moving and then flowering. Now, all these words can, uh, could be seen in the last line. It's the last word actually in the poem. Now, another. We have the proem still written by Jose Garcia Villa. Okay, again, join me in reading and then later on we'll be arriving at a certain literary device under sound okay so let's go the meaning of a poem is not a meaning of words the meaning of a poem is a symbol like the breathlessness of birds a poem cannot be repeated in paraphrase a poem is not a thought but a grace a poem has no meaning but loveliness. And then a poem has no purpose than to caress. Okay. So, again, we have words uh, in the uh, Again, we have words which are uh, being highlighted. And it's found, of course, at the end. Okay. So, the first one is words. Okay. We also have birds, and then we have paraphrase. We also have grace, and then it was followed by loveliness and caress. Now, question. What do you think is that a specific device under sound that these example, examples of words highlighted is trying to uh, say, ano kaya ang word na yun? Ano kaya yung specific literary device? Ang tinutukoy, of course, noong mga highlighted words. Okay? Hello there sa uh, uh, kay uh, Mark Angelo Dakiwag, who is watching from SDO Isabella. Buti, sinuportahan ako ng mga taga Isabella today. Okay. So, hello then. Kay uh, Ralph Roldan Madrillejos from Hume's Herodotus. I do not know if what school are you. Okay. So, according to, let me read some of your comments. Cherry Ann Bumanglag, his answer is definitely about rhyme. Okay. So, yung mga words pala na yun, uh, they are signaling something and that specific literary device is rhyme. 
Okay. So, let us define now what rhyme is. Okay. The similarity of two or more words with final syllables that sound alike to echo one another. That is rhyme. Okay. Now, if we go back to our examples a while ago, there are really uh, sounds which uh, can, could be here, could be heard the same or alike, right? Okay, so definitely they fall under the literary device called rhyme. Okay, I hope nakuha nyo. Okay, now we also have here another question. Why should we use rhyme in writing our poem? Okay. Bakit kailangan natin gumamit ng rhyme in using, uh, no, in writing a poem? Okay, medyo uh, naglalag ng konti ang ating internet connection na uh, nalilate yung uh, mga answers nyo, but then we'll try to read it uh, later. Okay, so why should we use rhyme? Of course, kailangan natin gumamit ng rhyme in, use, in writing a poem so that it will add mental pictures to the words uh, that are being used in the poem. Aside from that, rhyme is also used in poem to add meaning to the lines or to the poem itself. Okay? So that's the very reason. I hope na kuha nyo yun, mga bata. Okay? Sige. Now, moving on. We also have what we call as the rhyme scheme. Okay, sabi ko na, na late nung pasok ng mga sagot eh. According to Jessalyn Boraga Magaway, rhyme ang kanyang sagot a while ago. Okay, so that's good. Uh, natutuwa ako that you are interacting. Okay, so let us move now to the rhyme scheme. So, kailangan natin makinig ng mabuti dito, mga bata, kasi it's, uh, this is a complicated, uh, the complicated part of our session that you need to uh, master, especially if you, uh, if you are fan of writing your own poems, kailangan alam nyo, kabisado nyo, yung ating mga rhyme scheme. Okay? So, let us define now what a rhyme scheme is. Okay, so it's the sequence of sounds that repeats usually at the end of its line or stanza. Okay, take note of the word usually at the end of its line or stanza. Okay, rhyme schemes can change from line to line, stanza to stanza, or even from poem to poem. Okay? Now, paano magdalian tayo? We'll just have to look for the last word in every, in every line. Okay? And then let us try to label them later on so that you know how or what, kung ano yung tinatawag na rhyme scheme. Okay? Now, How do we label our rhyme schemes? First, we use the letters of the alphabet to label rhymes. Okay, so we're going to use A, B, C, D, etc. for as long as magkakaiba yung kanyang mga rhythm. Okay? And then we also have, we label the rhyme in the first line as A. So uh, the first word in the first line should be labeled A, okay? Now, identical rhymes will be labeled with the same letter, okay? So, ibig sabihin, sa madaling salita, if words are uh, with the same sound, you are going to label them with the same letter, okay? Now, let's try to uh, move with the examples. Para ma ma master nyo. Okay. Now, I have here another example, another set of poem. It's written by Dr. Seuss uh, and it's entitled Horton Hears a Who. Okay. Now, I'm going to read it. It's up to you if you want to read it also. 
then you can join me, okay, on the 15th of May in the jungle of Nul, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool. He was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. Okay, so uh, easily we go to the last word in every line. So we have the first one, Nul. And then we have Pool. And then we also have Joyce. And then it was followed by Noise. Now we are going to label this four. Okay. So let's start. So Nul will be labeled, of course, as A. Diba? Sabi natin kanina, the first labeling should start with A. Okay? Now, we also have pull. Na magkatunog ba yung null and then pull? If that's so, then we'll also label the, the second statement, which is pull, as A. So, we already have A and A for the first two lines. Okay. Now, we also have Joyce for the third line and then Noise for the fourth line. Magkatunog ba yung Joyce sa pool? Definitely hindi, right? And so, we are going to label Joyce with the letter B. Okay. Nakuha? I hope na nakukuha nyo and I hope na you can follow. Okay, so we have now the fourth one, which is noise. Okay? Alin ba ang katunog ng noise dyan? Is it joyce? Is it pool? Is it null? Okay? Now, according to Limuel Kalagi, uh, the, the correct labeling should be letter B. Tama nga ba si Limuel? Is it letter B? Okay, let's try to see. Yes, it's letter B. Bakit? Because Joyce sounds like noise and Joyce is labeled as B. Okay, so very good. Now let's have, uh, no, we have now the, the scheme AABB for the first uh, example of the poem. And now we move to the next, okay? For the next one, yeah. So Josephine Guzman is has also answered A A N B B. That's correct, and it's very good. Okay, and then Captain May Vergara Laurio says yes. It's also A A B B. That's correct. Okay. Now we have here stopping by woods on a snowy evening by Robert, uh, Robert Frost. So do, directly ta, uh, direct na tayo to the point. Don't tayo sa end line so that we could. Uh, uh, discuss the others later on, okay? So we have now no, do, here, snow, queer, near, lake, and here. So we have eight words. Now we are going to label each of those words. Okay. For the first one, of course, balik tayo sa basic, the first one should be A. Now, titigdan lang natin if the first one sounds like the second one. Uh, magkatunog ba yung no tsaka do? If yes, then the letter should also be A. Okay? I hope nakasunod tayo. So let me see something from the inbox. Okay? May nakasagot na ng A, B, C, A, C, C, D, C. Let's try to see. Here... Uh, does here sound like do? Let's try to see. Hindi. So, eventually, our labeling should be letter B. Okay. So, we have now the rhyme scheme A, A, B. What about the next one? We have snow. And snow should be labeled as, according to Miss Aliaga, it's A, B, A, B. Let's see. Yeah. So, it's not should be labeled as A. So, we have now, for the first stanza, we have the A, A, B, A rhyme scheme. 
I hope na nakafollow kayo ha. Okay, so we have now the next one. It's queer. So, let's see kung anong label dapat siya, anong letter. So, it's letter B because it sounds like the the word in the third line which is here. So, we should follow the the rhythm, okay? So, it's letter B. For the next one, you have near, okay? What about near, uh, students? Ayan, they answered B. Some answered also A. Then let's try to see. So you have there B because near, queer, and here sounds the same. Okay, so let's move to lake. Ano naman kaya ang lake? So it's C. Kasi it doesn't sound like no, like zo. Like here and square, di ba? Iba na yung kanyang sound. So, we'll be labeling it with another letter which is now C. And then for the last one, it's B. Balik tayo sa B. Now, let's see if sino nakakuha. A, A. The rhyme scheme is A, A, B, A. B, B, C, N, B. Okay, so most of you answered uh, the same with uh, our answer here, the right scheme. So, very good. That's nice to see, ano? Napakagaling ng ating mga learners, senior high school learners today. Okay, so so we could uh, we come up now with the the rhyme scheme A A B A B B C B. So that's the rhyme scheme. Now we also have the Ballad of Reading the All by Oscar Wilde. Okay, so our words here are coat, red hands, dead, love, and bed. Okay, so those are the highlighted words. Again, so first word natin, quote, we are going to label it as A. Okay? So, ang bilis sumagot ni uh, Marites uh, Galut. And then we also have Neslin Kiron. Napakabilis nilang magsagot. Okay. Ang hirap po pala, Tutor Jerry. Akala ko basic. Well, definitely... I-bridge natin yung hirap na yan. Okay? Kasi, although, syempre, nandun na tayo sa online, it's too hard to learn in the online uh, processes. Pero, syempre, we're trying to, we're trying hard to bridge our lessons para matuto kayo. Okay? So, going back, we have the next letter, which is, you know, the next word, which is red. So, the uh, code sounds like red. Definitely, ang sagot, no. So, we're going to label it as B. Okay? And then, we have hands to be labeled as C because wala siyang katunog. And then, dead sounds like red. So, it's letter B. Love sounds like what? Wala. So, it's letter D. And then, bed, of course, it sounds like red and Dead. So, we are going to label it as B. So, you have now the rhyme scheme A, B, C, B, D, B. Sino nakakuha? Okay. So, by Mintes, si Miss Christy Velasco. Who else? Joanna Soriano also uh, missed one. Okay. So, we have now, again, the rhyme scheme A, B, C, B, D, B. Okay. So, moving on. It's your turn. Kayo ang sasagot dito. I won't uh, uh, give, I won't uh, direct you to the answers. Okay? So, what do you think is the rhyme scheme for this specific poem? The Ballad to an Optimist by Andrew Lang. Sige, sagot tayo. Uh, Seconds lang tayo, pabilisan ng sagot. <clears throat> According to Mr. Uh, Bugina, it's A, B, C, B, D, B. So let's try to see later on. <clears throat> okay, sabi ni John Doyle Malilin, super late kabe. Yeah, uh, some of you came late. And then it's okay, basta we'll be interactive sa ating discussion today. Okay? According to... Uh, Mr. Soriano, uh, Miss Soriano, it's A, B, C, B, D, B. 
So, tingnan natin later on if uh, who got the correct answer. Okay? So, according to Mr. B uh, Ms. Barcebal, it's A, B, C, B, D, B. So, ano nga ba ang sagot? Let's try to see. So for the first one, it should be labeled as A. The, the next one is B. And then we also have A, B, B, C, B, and C. So we came up to the, the scheme rhyme A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C. Okay, I hope na nakuha natin, okay? Based, that is based, of course, sa ating uh, na mga naunang examples a while ago, okay? So, I hope that you have mastered the, the rhyme scheme. It's too easy naman, ano? Napakadaling mag-rhyme scheme, mag-label ng rhyme scheme. If only you could uh, inject into your mind, parang bakuna lang, yung ating mga sinasabi din ni-discuss. Okay? Now, we move on to the next example. The next example or literary device under sound, and that is repetition. Okay? So we say repetition when a literary device repeats the same words or phrases a few times to make an idea clearer and more memorable. Okay? So on repetition now, it makes an idea clear. It's clearer and more memorable o nga, no? na pag, pag inuulit-ulit, pumapasok talaga sa ating um, minds. Okay? Pumapasok yan. Kaya pag nagagalit ang mga magulang natin, kung ano yung inuulit-ulit na words, yun na rin yung pumapasok sa ating minds. Okay? So that is repetition. And under repetition, we have the first example, which is alliteration. So when we say alliteration, it's the repetition of the first consonant sounds in words. Take note of the, the, the given definition. First consonant sounds. That's why we have the given example. It's a common example. Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers. So definitely, it's an alliteration because we repeated the p sound and that is a consonant sound okay so we have here another examples the big bad bear bored the baby bunnies by the bushes okay other than that we have gary grumpily gathered the garbage for the first example we have repeated sound the sound uh b b which is a consonant sound and then the, the other one is g, g. So it's also a consonant. I hope na nakuha niyo yun, ha, mga bata. So that is alliteration. Now moving on, we also have assonance. Okay? So let's try to differentiate later on. Ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng alliteration sa Assonance. Okay, so when we say assonance, it's it's the repetition of the vowel sound, but start with different consonant sounds. Okay? So, yun na yung kanyang pagkakaiba. Kanina, alliteration, it's a consonant sound. But then, here, it's already the vowel sound. So we have the example, I made my way to the lake. Okay? So, of course, yung naka-highlighted uh, word uh, letter dyan, which is A, is a vowel sound. And of course, it falls under assonance. Okay? It falls under assonance. So we have another examples para ma master. Here, the mellow wedding bells. So uh, just like the first example, we have the letter E as the vowel sound, which is being repeated. Okay? We also have the rain in Spain stays mainly on the plane. Vowels such as AI, AI, so second, uh, so Spain, and then mainly, are considered as assonance. Okay? Sige. 
So uh, let's move on to the third example. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So we have now consonants. Tapos na tayo sa alliteration and then assonance. Then we have the consonants. When we say consonants, it's the repetition of consonant sounds partly the same doon sa alliteration kanina because it's consonant also. But then this one, it's in the middle or at the end of words as distinguished from alliteration where the initial sound is repeated. Okay? So dito, nandoon sa middle sound or sa end of words yung ating uh, sound alike. Okay? So we have the given example. Uh, Mike likes his new bike. Okay? So the the consonant here is the, the sound ka. Ka. Okay? It's in the middle of words. We also have I will crawl away with the ball. So we have the letter L, the sound L, L, okay? In the wheel, crawl, and the ball. And then the last one, we also have, he stood on the road and cried. We also uh, we have the, the sound D, D. So it falls under consonants, okay? I hope nakuha nyo, ano, ang pagkakaiba ng alliteration, consonants, and assonants. Now, moving on, it's your turn again. Tignan natin kung makukuha nyo ito. Ha? Read the lines carefully and be able to classify it as to the type of repetition. Kailangan natin magmadali because we only have four minutes. Okay? So, you're going to write AL for alliteration, AS for assonance, and CO for consonants. But the first one, it will creep and beep while you are sleep, while you sleep. Okay. The answer here is what? It's co. Okay. It's consonants. Okay. I hope you get it right. Sige, Jefferson, David, Amansek got it right. Okay. What about the next one? When he was nearly thirteen. It's What's the answer? You have the clue there. E. It's AS because it falls under assonance. And then the third one we have, those lazy lizards are lying like lumps in the leaves. What is the answer for this? Is it alliteration, assonance, or consonance? Yes, you got it right. It's alliteration. I hope na na ipasok nyo lahat ng ating mga lessons for today class. And of course, uh, our challenge for the week, I'm going to leave you the challenge of the week. And this is, uh, you're going to write four lines of poetry and post it on Facebook with your picture. You will be recognized, of course, next week using the hashtag Itulai Creative Writing. And then take note of the following. The poem should have an ABAB rhyme scheme na napag-aralan natin kanina. And then the poem should contain at least one of the following. Assonance, consonance, and alliteration. Top five, of your, uh, top five poems will be featured and read live on our next Itulai session. So that's it, uh, senior high school students. I hope na, na nakuha nyo lahat ng ating mga lessons today. And I'm expecting you to, of course, send your poems through the hashtag given. And before I leave, I want you to ponder on this uh, certain uh, motto quote by Mal Malcolm Forbes na ang education's purpose is to replace an, en an empty mind with an open one. Thank you for joining me for a 40-minute discussion. And if you have questions, you can uh, email me at my email, jerusel.corpus at deped.gov.ph. Or you can uh, post them, uh, you can send me your uh, comments or anything in my uh, official deped account, Jerusel eCorpus. Thank you very much. 
and see you again next Tuesday for another exciting Creative Writing Tuesday. Thank you. Ang husay naman, natapos mo ang iyong tutorial session kasama ang iyong mahusay na itulay tutor. May bago ka bang natutuhan? I-share na yan gamit ang hashtag itulay level up. Huwag aalis ha dahil may susunod pang programa na pwede mo ring panoorin at salihan. Dahil naghihintay na ang iyong mga tutors. Happy learning dito sa itulay!